I, I think the thing that's impressed me the most, and now after hearing Frank last night and a little bit tonight, and, and Henry as well with the first time, one of the things that I've been very impressed with is the, the remorsefulness that is coming out for that past life. Yeah. I mean, am I, am I wrong on, on that? I mean, No, no, you're not wrong at all, because, you know, back then, you knew you were doing wrong. But we were brainwashed as kids that we were justified in our actions. We were on, we, we got the right of way. This is our life. Everybody else is blind. You know, we're justified in our actions. It was a subculture. It was a subculture that you was born into as a kid. Yeah. And, it, you know, I mean, everything was completely opposite of normality. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my life. But it was your normal as far as you knew. Exactly. Yeah, right. I mean, exactly. And, uh, you know, and I can see these kids today, you know, uh, who do they, uh, who do they idolize? You know, the guys with the, uh, with the Maseratis and, right. and the Bentleys in the neighborhood, these, these uh, you know, these gang bangers and whatever. I mean, and it was the same way. I mean, uh, you know, back in my day, they had Cadillacs and Lincolns, you know, and right. the Christ Imperial. But, it, you know, it, and, you know, it's a sad situation, you know. You go into a, you know, a neighborhood, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, the old hood, you know, uh, you know, the ghetto or whatever we used to call it, I don't know, we used to call it. But these kids, these are the, I mean, I, I looked up to these guys. They were the, they were the role models in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. you, know, the, you, you know, I mean, the, the guys with the yachts down in Sheepshead Bay and, the, you, you know, and the, and the Cadillacs and the bimbos on each arm, you know. Uh, and, the same, yeah. and the same thing happens today. <laughs> so you've seen that. You know what I mean? You didn't see the price they had to pay. Sure. So you don't see that part. See, they, they never tell you what's going to happen to those guys down the line. But you know, yeah. once you're in this life, you're on oxygen tank. Because from that moment on, slowly but surely, that oxygen starts to run out and your luck starts to run out. Because like anything else, if you're out committing crimes every day, it's only a matter of time before you go to jail. I mean, basically, it's part of the business. You're going to be. I woke up in the morning, I committed felonies, I went to sleep planning a felony. I mean, just, <laughs> that's the way my life was. And, uh, I mean, Henry hit it on the head, you know. It's, we looked up to these guys, but you never seen the full repercussions of what their actions were going to bring. You, all you seen was the glamour, the glitz, the girls, the money, this, that. You didn't see the price that was going to have to be paid. You know, we, we were talking about. Uh about movies, obviously, because it's something where the people have learned about the mob over the years. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're talking about now has never been better depicted in a movie like a Bronx tale, mm -hmm. right? Because in the Bronx yeah, tale, you know, and I, I was absolutely. just thinking about that because I don't know if any of you guys know that the, the, the young man that plays the young man in that movie uh, just got sentenced to 30 years in prison for being involved in a, a murder type conspiracy thing right. but, but not the point that I wanted to bring up the point is is that that movie tried to show you know with De Niro playing his dad that was the first that, movie that was the movie that tried to show that you know hey this is really not the life it may look glamorous but when you go when you dig a little as as you know into the subculture as Henry said it's not all that good your and father was a tough guy. And the father was this tough guy. I had to get up in the morning and go to work yeah. and drive this bus. And, and yet, I'm the tough guy. These guys are not. And yet, which really hit a, a And yet, the flashing of the cash and, you know, yeah, again, the, you know, the camaraderie of the, yeah. the guy standing mm -hmm. on the corner. Right. But, you know, I, I was thinking, and nobody's mentioned that movie. And that, and that was, still goes on today. I yeah. mean, you go into any any rural neighborhood any, in the right. country. And I don't get with it. Vegas. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Cincinnati, or bumfuck Egypt, you know. Uh, <laughs> six. six. No, I mean, come on. Where was that Egypt? Where was that Egypt? No, 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 I mean, oh, you know, in the Midwest. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Almost a spit take? Or is it a I mean, I used to say that as a kid. <laughs> I mean, that's one thing. Thank you. But, that's the, but, but, you're, but the point is well taken. Because, you know, and, and, and I, I, I know the answer, but it's just not going to happen because it's, and it's all about parenting. You know, and, and having parents around. You know, you know I understand what you're saying, but here's, here's how I, I see it. I see it as that you can teach your kids 
great values, respect, all of the above. And you have to throw in, you gotta pray for a little luck as well. Luck, because yeah. when they're faced with certain challenges in their lives, you gotta hope that they act accordingly. And you know, you, you gotta sit there and cross your fingers that what you instill in them is gonna be enough to get them through. But basically, they're gonna have to make that decision. And, uh, you know. Your yeah. Edge of vacation. Head, you got to get oh, well, I didn't, I didn't know. In your, in their head. And I was one of those kids that had a head like granite. Test the door, you know what I mean? So, you Test know, the door? Test the door. Oh, thank hothead. you. Oh, right. Okay. And, uh, and by days, it's capatoos. Yeah, see? And that's what happens, you know, you just, uh, you got to, sometimes you just got to learn the hard way. And it's a shame because some of these kids, you see, they're throwing their lives away. And I was away my first bid, my first bid, and I went to a place in upstate New York with all young kids. And all these young kids have 60 years, 70 years. The kid's 17 years old. He's got 60 years to do. How are you going to rationalize with a 17-year-old kid with 60 years to do? He hasn't even fathomed yet. It's a waste of life. No, it's a waste of life. He hasn't even fathom how much time he's got to do yet. So to him, it's all fun and games right now. But it's going to catch up to him 10 years in. He's going to realize 15 years in, and it's going to be heartbreaking. 20 years in, this kid might be looking for a rope. Well, they become institutionalized, and they just, you know, they become part of the, the, the yeah. system. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't know because it, I don't know what you can it's do sad, about it. It's sad, because there's, no, there's, no, there's no answer, there's no remedy, there's no specific uh, recipe to, to stop it. You get some How did kids. you guys get through it when you were incarcerated? Well, you know, as, as, as far as incarceration, you know, I was around a lot of guys from my neighborhood who also were in there. So we were relying on each other. We were very, you know, we were minority in there. But we were, you know, relying on each other. And we helped each other along the way. Our families would come on visits together. We would stick together night and day. And um, it for got safety? Us, for well, safety well, purposes? Well, because you still with your own. That's okay. the way it is in jail. If, if there's any lessons to learn in jail, you'll learn racism is run rampant in prison. Okay. You know, because you'll, you'll see it when you go to the yard. You know, you have uh, white guys stay with the white guys, black guys stay with the black guys, and you see it like that. You don't, you know, I didn't make the rules. These are the rules there when you walk in. You walk in the wrong spot in the state prison, they'll tell you, you belong over there, buddy. You know, and so basically these are the things you pick up along the way. But we stuck together because you're a minority in a place, and when things get bad, you have to have that, those friendships. But, you know, for anything else, and, you know, some people are stronger than others. You know, you just have to, one guy asked me, he goes, how'd you do all that time? I didn't volunteer. I had to do it. There's no way to get around. It was in community service. No, it's like, you know, <laughs> the judge says, you know, it, six you know, and I, go you know back and I used to tease the guard when he used to pass by son and go, hey. I said, I got a game. He said, what do you want? I said, do me a favor. I'm going to give you a phone number. It's my mother's house. You call, you tell I'm sorry, come get me, I'm ready to go. I used to break chops like crazy because that's, people live, as they say, is to have some fun in prison. And they say, well, fun in prison. But that kept you normal. That kept you sane. You know? If you didn't laugh and you walked around a miserable all day, after a while you're going to want to, you know, hang yourself. How much, how many years were you? I did 11 years. 11? Well, basically in and out like that, almost, almost, Henry? a little less. I did 14 years behind the walls. In one stretch? No, I mean, in, in my lifetime. I mean, in the best years of my life, you know, literally, they were the best years of my life, you know, in my 30s. Hello, Frank, you know. 40s. Frank, what did he do? Uh, he, what did he do to... Uh, where is Frank, by the way? What happened? Is he all right? Yeah, where do you go? He's making the deal to pay for the show tonight. No, He's <laughs> 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 negotiating on behalf of Vegas. There you go. I think when we did the book, I think he had the, the longest single stretch he had, I think, was six years. I did six. But he had several others, you know, a year here, two years there. I think he had about 15 or so in. And you don't get that back. You know, you don't get that back. You lose that time forever. Like Henry said, it's the best year of your life. life. I went away. I I got a college degree. I was dyslexic. I didn't have a high school diploma when I went to prison. I come out with, with a two-year associate degree in personal hotel management and, uh, and nutrition. I mean, I put my time to pretty good. And, and besides, I had a maid, you know what I mean, because I was with the wise guys, the good fellows, or whatever you want to call them, you know. But, I mean, I did, I did, uh, I couldn't read a book before I went to prison. I was reading 
four books or five books a, uh, a month, you know, in prison. And uh, I, I actually got a text from a listener from Australia. America. Okay, so we know we're staying yeah. international. And here's the question, and, and you guys answered as a panel question: um, the crimes that you committed previously, given today's law enforcement technology. Go, go ahead. What? What? You can never go to work. I mean, today the. Uh, it won't be work. Would you have done the same crimes? And you answered. You answered the question. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I never robbed from a small guy. We only robbed from insurance companies, right. and you know, uh, we didn't rob from. We never sold anything small, micro anyway. Right. The crew I was with, and. Uh, uh, you the question? Well, just give him the law enforcement. <laughs> Here, yeah. I stole a No, no, no. <laughs> give him the law enforcement. Yeah, but the technology today. You couldn't get away. You couldn't get away with it. Absolutely. Right? No. no. So what kind of what what differences would there be then, given the technology, with some of the crimes that you guys committed? Would you have to change? Well, you know, see, that's just it. You hit it right on the head. The organized crime morphosizes itself. It's constantly changing with the times. So what was prevalent for me? in my era or prevalent for Henry in his era doesn't necessarily maybe work today. So whoever's around today, they grew up in an era where, you know, staying on a computer all day long, hacking into people's bank accounts, you know, you know, uh, identity theft, everything like that, that's what you're gonna see. Because that's what they know. This is what these kids were brought up, you know, that this was their uh, how can I say it? Their education. Trial with fire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is how these kids operate today. You know, you're not going to see guys in the street uh, shaking down people anymore. You're not going to see shakedowns like that unless they shake down behind the scenes. Or you're going to see a lot of white collar crimes and stuff like that. It's got to change. In order for them to survive, they got to change. But they will change to survive. They will change. You know, there'll always be crime as long as there's money in this world. There's always going to be organized crime. Yeah. Um, I've been informed by our engineer that we need to just take one final break before we wrap up with one final segment. This will be a... A lot of rules around Well, here. listen, we got bills to pay. You know, I can't, what can I tell you? But 